Hi, this is Mark from Control Devices and I'm just going to show you um, what we believe should actually happen. We tried the experiment with an optical sensor before for you, um, but it was fairly unstable and I think to get the, um, the reflection and the, uh, and the non-reflective surface right well, is going to be difficult. Also in a dirty environment, things settling on the tip of the sensor um, will cause a problem. Now, I'll be back in a second. This is the sensor we wanted to use. Essentially, it fires off a um, beam and reflects back and counts. So it's a quite a fast sensor. But the problem is if you get gunk on here, you're essentially going to, to stop this from working. Um, so we thought uh, there's probably a better way than just using this sensor here. So I'll show you now on the board what we're doing. Now, we are going to still use a sensor Okay, so that's, let's just say that's the cross section of it, oh, well not even cross section, that's the side view of it. Um, it's obviously got thread all along here. Now, I will show you the actual sensor working, but this sensor is, is an inductive sensor. So it senses whether there's metal in front of it or not. And this particular one, and they do come in different sizes, the gap between the sensor and the surface it's measuring should be point eight of a mil um, or uh, less. Sorry, <laughs> wrong way. That's right. Okay. Now, we've set this up in the next room and we'll see that in a second. Now, ideally what you usually use it for is to measure gear teeth. Okay, so if there's a section anywhere on your system where you have a rise or fall of the actual tooth. I'm just drawing a pretty pretty gear. So what will happen is as this goes past and goes past the pit, the actual gap will be greater than 0.8 mil. So it will, it will actually measure a low voltage. And when the tooth is near it, it will measure a high voltage. So essentially what we will create is this, like pulses. And the sensor, sorry, and the little display can count these. So now we'll go into the other room and uh, come on through. So. so what we've got here is our CNC machine. As you can see on the chuck, you've got these holes. Now if you come around to this side, you'll see that there's a very small gap between the actual chuck and it's, it's going right past it there. Okay, so this is actually going to measure the pits. So if you zoom out a little bit now, Okay, and so I'll show you the whole setup. So the sensor is this little fella here. It's quite small. Um, it's, you know, it's obviously going to be fairly easy to mount. Now, if you have a shaft, maybe creating some pits in it, or maybe creating a ring with, you know, you can put over the shaft that has the pits and drops. It's up to you how you achieve that. But this is a much better way because, the, you know, on the sensor itself, you're not going to get anything really settling um, on that edge and if it is dust or something the, the, the sensor will work through the dust so what we've got here now if you look at the whole setup is this is going to the little display which is obviously showing zero RPMs we also do have a um, an oscilloscope which will actually show the frequency of what's going on so what I'm going to do is now step across the camera and start my machine so uh, we're going to give it let's say uh, 2,000 RPMs. Okay, so it's going to measure. It's going to work past where you you actually need it to, which is 1,000 RPMs. We're going to start that, so the machine will align itself. I'm just going to drop that head. Oops, a little bit too much. Okay, so now it's in position, and you can see on the display it's showing the true speed of my machine and it's actually showing me that my machine is not that accurate it's about 20 rpms out and on the oscilloscope it's actually showing the frequency so um, open up the scale so it's showing you the pulses that are being generated so it's also showing me that the actual ingrate or the holes that have been put in aren't exactly even you can see that twitching a little bit just here, you can see the edge of this twitching back and forth. I'm not sure if that will come out on the camera, but it's actually, you know, still accounting for that. That's why 
when you look at the sensor, uh, sorry, at the display here, it's floating a little bit, you know. Um, and I'll just adjust this so it's a little bit more stable here. Okay, that's where it should be, so. It's sort of floating between 10 RPM, so it's, it's within 1% or, or so of what's, what's really going on, so. Right, so this is how we've set up the RPM meter with an inductive sensor, and I think that's probably the better way for you to go. Um, if you have any questions, please give us a call. Thank you.